So fractures, distal radius fractures, three part fracture. Usually in clinical situations, what we get is a lot of combination here. A lot of combination in this area, this area, and especially on the dorsal side. So our aim is first to get the articular surface reduction. Just take a clamp. Usually in a clinical situation, we don't use a clamp. We just ask our assistant to hold it and pass in a K-wire. Can I have K-wire? So once you get a reduction, so it should not be very near the articular surface because this is the area where we are going to get our screws. So we'll just keep it away from the... This will hold our distal fragments. Similarly, because we don't, there's no soft tissue attachment or anything difficult to apply a plate. So we'll just put another K wire, which is fixing this distal fragment to the metaphysal fragment. So fracture is stable. Mm, this is a very difficult situation, matlab, diff, uh, matlab, rare situation in an actual uh, clinical scenario because we don't get such a big chunks with bone all around, no soft tissues attached, no bleeding, nothing. So thing is there are two types of plate. One is for left, one is for right. So the one which is going distally should be uh, pointing towards the radial steloid because whenever there is a combination only bone we get is subarticular bone so our plate has to be as distal as possible but it has uh, the screw should not go to the articular surface so that is the only thing to get into this that's why we have a oblong hole The contouring was done, actually this was used earlier, so that contouring part was already done, like bending from lateral and medial because on the uh, volar surface, the, all the flexor tendons are, especially FPL is just gliding over the plate. So we take a normal sleeve, normal sleeve is non-threaded sleeve, take a non-threaded sleeve. So uh, thing is we first use a cortical screw on the plate in the center, in the center of this oblong hole so that we can, if we have to slide it, we can slide distally or proximally a plate. Okay.
before tightening you just slide your plate where you want like if you want it distal if you want it proximal according to your fracture according to this and you can rotate this also to get the more hold less suppose we want more screws on this side we can just rotate a little bit so this would be our final thing once we decide this is our final thing then we tighten this screw once you tighten this screw this plate is holding it's just buttressing but it should not move further uh, proximal or distal we lock it proximally in the last hole 1.8 So there is a mark on the drill which corresponds to the marking on the guide. So here it is like 16. See this mark? Yeah, okay, mark. 16, 16. So that is the screw we would be using it. So after once it is there, then we use a torque limiting screwdriver to lock the screw. Unfortunately, we don't have torque limiting screwdriver in this. So this plate is now locked in the proximal fragment. We need two more two screws in each of the fragment. We'll start from the medial. This is not an osteoporotic bone. I can tell you it's a really hard bone.
ट्वेंटी So these are self tapping screws, 2.4 millimeter. The drill size is डॉक्टर विकास इज इट इम्पॉर्टेंट टू फिक्स ऑल द स्क्रूज इन दिस हॉरिजॉन्टल लेम और वट शुड बी द क्राइटेरिया रोटेशन सो इट्स टी शेप सो टू स्क्रूज ऑन द मिडिल साइड टू टू स्क्रूज इन दैटर फ्रेगमेंट सो नाउ वी आर डन वी जस्ट रिमूव द वायर सो इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन दी फ्रैक्चर ज्योमेट्री फ्रैक्चर ज्योमेट्री इफ इट इज वेरी कम्युनिटेड देन वी वुड लाइक टू फिल द होल रो बिकॉज द they are just a fragments small fragments they just acts as a gutter like a uh, gutter of the beam of the roof you can say an articular surface is resting over the screws and it simpler fractures in which there is no combination so we can just go to this is the stability of the stability of the fracture after the 